Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. I'm so glad that you're with us today for our worship service at St. Joseph Baptist Church. Listen, before we get started, do me two favors. The first thing is, go ahead and share this video and invite your Facebook friends to be a part of this worship experience. The second thing is, if you're married, thinking about being married, invite your husband and your wife in the room, um, text your girlfriends, your, your male friends, and let them know we're talking about marriage today. As we continue our series on Jesus' Sermon on the Mountain, we're going to be talking about God's original plan for marriage. Um, a subject I personally enjoy talking about, and my wife and I do a lot around marriage, so we love talking about this subject. It's going to be great. Invite someone, share, like, and comment. After every service, I go back and read the comments, so please comment. God bless you, and enjoy today's service. Your ways, God, that 
that he's leading to you and he's acknowledging you in all his ways, God, and you direct our pastor's path. We thank you, Lord God, that nothing shall perforate or penetrate the hedge of protection that you placed around our pastor. We thank you, Lord God, that our pastor is covered in you and our pastor speaks what you would have him to speak. He says what you would have him to say and he does what you would have him to do, Lord God. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that each and every member of St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church is covered under the same anointing, God, that they cannot be touched in the name of Jesus, that you cover them, that you keep them, that you bless them, that they are prosperous and they are victorious in everything that they set their minds to do with you, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that your presence is in this place today, that your spirit is in this place today. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. And wherever you are, you give God a hand clap of praise. And we thank you, God, for loving us and keeping us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. in me cause when I look where you have brought me you sure been blessing me yes Lord 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 you've been blessing me and I can tell the world tell the world that I am blessed I am blessed yes when I woke up early this morning oh I was clothed in my right mind Tell the world. 
the service one more time. Sing it with me, say, I'm glad to be in the service. I'm glad to be in the service. And I'm glad to be in the service one more time. For he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. And I'm glad to be in the service one more time. We say one more time. One more time. Sing, I'm glad to be in the service one more time. And I'm glad to be in the service. And I'm glad to be in the service. Yes, I'm glad to be in the service one more service one more time. Let's say one more time. Oh, one more time. Say one more time. We're singing one more time. And I'm glad to be in the service. Oh, I'm glad. So glad to be here. Glad to be in the service one more time. waking you up this morning, for starting you on your way, for putting joy in your heart. Sometimes the weight of the world gets so heavy, especially in this time that we're in, but he is our refuge. And one thing I remember and always think about is that he's the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. He's already provided. Everything you need, he's already provided. Just bless his name right now. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You
sweetest name Lord, we ask 
yet that you will speak to their hearts and their minds. Lord God, that they will do what pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. As we come this morning, our Father, we just thanking you. Lord, we need not all the blessing. We have our darling Son, Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. for joining us today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, welcome. We are so glad to have you. You can join us every Monday through Friday for Noonday Prayer as we pray corporately by calling our teleconference line at 251-265-9401. Sunday School is back. Join us on Monday evenings at 6 p.m. on our teleconference line for the lesson of the week. Again, that number is 251-265-9401. This is a time when we need the word more than ever, and we need to understand how it applies and how to apply it to our daily lives. Join us for Bible study live on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., on St. Joseph Baptist Church Facebook page or Sound the Bells YouTube channel. There are three ways that you can continue to give your tithes and offering. Option number one, you can download the app Givelify and set up your safe and secure profile. Option number two, 
You can bring your tithes and offering by the church Monday through Friday, anytime before 4 p.m. We are located at 661 South Broad Street, Mobile, Alabama, 36603. Option number three. You can mail your check or money order to St. Joseph Baptist Church, 661 South Broad Street, Mobile, Alabama, 36603. Again, thank you for joining us, and we pray that you are loving, living, and leading Christ's way.
in your home, right where you are. Just bless the Lord with your hands. Amen. We certainly give honor to the presence of the Lord in this place. To our deacons who are here with us, to my lovely wife, Lady Bell, and our tech team, and to all my fellow children who are watching us from your various locations around the world. Good morning. And somewhere it's afternoon. Good afternoon to you as well. Thank God for being here today. You know, God is still good despite what's going on around us. God is still amazing. God, he's still worthy of all of our praise. And we just got to look at what God is doing in this pandemic. I mean, we people, some people get started crazy. I wouldn't encourage you to get out too soon, too quickly. But God has done so much in these last 60 plus days that we have been stuck at home. Um, and I hope we have used this time wise to really grow closer to him in our relationship. I'll be definitely excited about what God is doing in St. Joseph. And I'm excited about what God is doing in all of your various churches and in your life, in your life as well. As we continue today in our study from Jesus' Sermon on the Mountain, we're going to be picking up this afternoon, this morning in Matthew chapter 5, um, verse number 27 through 32. And we're going to be talking about God's original plan for marriage. Marriage, God's original plan. Now, uh, for the sake of this teaching and this discussion today, um, if you are not married, you are single. Okay, we got to get that disclaimer out there. When, I, when I'm talking about married people and single, if you are not married, married with the ring on your hand and you have confessed your love before the Lord and the congregation of people of the Lord and the judge and nowadays if you have been notarized you are single I don't care how long you've been dating or how long you've been shacking you are single that's the first disclaimer if you're not married you are single the second disclaimer for this discussion, and whenever I'm talking about marriage, it's always between a man and a woman. All right. That's how God ordained it from the, the, from the beginning of time with Adam and Eve. That's how we see it in the scriptures. We're going to actually read one of them today. But that's how we see the marriage is between a man and a woman. All right. So, we got that out of the way. Let us begin. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, and let's look at um, verses 27 through 32. Ye have heard that it is said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if if, and if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Amen. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Verse 31. It has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, cause her to commit adultery and and whosoever shall marry her, that divorce that is divorced committeth adultery. All right, it's finna get some. It's finna get deep. Okay. We finna tread some deep waters. This is gonna be a. a, a it's not a subject, a not not something that's talked a lot uh, when it comes to marriage and God's original plan for marriage. Um, we gotta look at that. Remember, we talked um, prior last week. I wanted to know two weeks ago about Jesus coming to fulfill the law. 
which means he didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law, which means to expand it, to complete it. To you know, Jesus deals with the heart of men, where the law dealt with the action and the sin of men. Remember, so on last week we began to see Jesus how he begins to fulfill the law when he begins the teaching. Last week we talked about uh, not being angry with your brother and your sister, and and, and we talked about that and and that, and, and um. Agree with your adversary quickly. He began to show us through those scriptures how he came to fulfill the law. And that continues today. I mean, and talk, we talk about marriage and God's original plan. First of all, I want us to understand adultery when in, in preparing for this. This is a subject matter that I personally enjoy talking about. I like talking about marriage. My wife and I do a lot around marriage. Um, right now, I'm actually uh, doing premarital counsel with a couple at the church, well, a young, young lady at the church who's be getting married next month. And we always begin um, marriage with the question of how do we get here? Like, how do we get here? How do we get to the point where you're saying, I want to spend the rest of my life with this man or this woman? And then they begin to share their little story, how they met and how they fell in love and how now they're ready to get married. And then I said, but this is the thing about that. You decided to marry your girlfriend and your boyfriend because you enjoy spending time with your girlfriend or your boyfriend. But then did we get married and somehow we become husband and wife, we stop being boyfriend and girlfriend. All right. Which is the one who I married to begin with. That's who I enjoy being with. Right. And we look at that. And then the next question always comes up is, if this doesn't work out for you, is divorce an option? And I always lead in, that's a trick question, because it really is a trick question. If this doesn't work out for you, then is divorce an option? Um, sometimes, the, in most cases, the answer is always no, it's not an option. But we also know in the back of our mind that it probably is an option. In God's original plan, divorce was never the intent for us. He wanted us to be married for life. We're going to look closer to closer in that. Another thing I want us to look at as we, as we go get ready to get into this is how important it was to be a virgin. And he got quiet then, I bet. I bet got quiet in everybody's house. How important it was in the Bible to be a virgin. And we're going to look at some scriptures today because listen, if fathers were expecting Expected to raise virgin daughters and give her to a husband. It was the expectation that you raise your daughter to be a virgin and she goes to give herself to her husband for the first time. When did that change? When did that change? When did, when did being a virgin no longer became, became shameful? It became shameful to be a virgin. But in the Bible days, it was expected that fathers raised virgin daughters. I know, the, I know one problem is we don't have fathers in the home raising daughters. That's part of the problem there. That's part of the problem. But that was the expectation. When we look at this, it says, you have heard, it's been said that in the old time, that thou shalt not commit adultery. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Exodus 20 and, it's in my notes somewhere, 20 and 14. Exodus 20 and 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And adultery is consensual sexual relations between a married person and someone other than his or her spouse. But look, according to biblical law, adultery was forbidden. And adultery was defined by the woman's marital status. So if the woman is married to a man, and she lays with another man, then she's committing adultery. If she lays with, uh, if she lays with a man and, and he rapes her, it was unwanted, it wasn't consensual, then that's right. And he get, he's stoned for that. But if she committed adultery, she gets stoned. That was the law. So let's so we're gonna let's let's go to, let's go to um, the penalty for adultery was the penalty for adultery was death. If a man has consensual relations with a married or an engaged woman, that's important. A married or engaged woman, 
they both are guilty of adultery. If an unmarried, not engaged woman and a man have relation, it's not adultery, but the man is expected to take her as his wife. If the unmarried man and unmarried woman have relations, it's not considered adultery, but listen, he is expected to take her as his wife. Which is why we get to the woman, the, the Samaritan woman, the issue at the, at the well in John, John fourteen, I believe it is. Yeah, John, yeah, John, yeah, John four, John four. We get to the Samaritan woman. Jesus says, "Call for your husband." She said, "I'm not. I don't have a husband." He said, "You got five, and the one you're with not yours." All right. That wasn't because she had said I do to somebody. Because he was talking about her past, and we have to realize. Again, when did being a virgin become socially unacceptable? And I understand we're living in a time where, you know, anything goes. I mean, I have to do, I have to give a disclaimer that marriage is between a man and a woman just to give you an idea of where we are in society today. But listen, God's standards does not change because man's lower as he is. God's standards does not change because men Lord theirs. Let's look at Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. Because I want you to see something about this virginity stuff, about being a virgin. About being a virgin. Deuteronomy uh, 22. No, we got 20, yeah, 22. And we're going to begin at verse number 20. And we're going to read through 24. But if this. <clears throat> But if this thing be true, and the tokens of her virginity be not found of the damsel, so, so what's happening here is if if a, a man takes a wife and he realizes on that first night after the wedding that she's not a virgin, or or at some point after they've married, and, and he realizes that she wasn't a virgin, they have what's called uh, the tokens of virginity. We're going to talk about what that is in a minute. Uh, then, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house. And the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she died. Because she had wrought folly to, in Israel, listen, to play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away among you. You, you saw, did you see that? You see how serious it was not to be considered a virgin? That you brought shame to your father's house? And we see that text said that you that to play the whore in her father's house, so shall thou put evil away um, from among thee. So listen, to put the evil away, they kill the unvirgin girl. If a man be found lying with um, with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the man that lie with the woman and the woman, so shalt thou put away evil. You got that? If a man is found lying with a woman, if a man is found lying with a married woman, they both are stoned. Talk about it. Thou shalt not commit adultery. This, this is the law. If a damsel is is a virgin to be betrothed unto her husband and a man find her in the city and lie with her then ye shall bring them both out into the gate of the city and ye shall stone them both out unto the gate of the city ye shall stone them with the stones that they die and the damsel because she cried not be in the city and the man because he have committed because because he have humbled his neighbor's wife so thou shalt be put away evil from among you. You see what we're talking about. Thou shalt, thou shalt not commit adultery. And the penalty for adultery is death. So when we look at that, this is what I, when, it, when it comes to adultery, adultery begins before you get to the act of adultery. All right? Adultery begins before we get to the act of adultery. Let's keep on going. We're going to see this right here in verse 28. 
But I say unto you, you remember that part? This is where Jesus is establishing his authority. And you know, you know, you've heard of this, but this is what I'm saying. I'm saying that if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery in your heart. If you look at a woman to lust after her, you have already committed adultery in your heart. Again, adultery begins before the act of adultery begins. Listen, listen. If in your heart, your intentions are, are taking you, your, your thoughts and your mind is taking you places with that individual other than to church or the altar, you're already messing up. Just look. Just look. You, you, look at David. David saw Bathsheba. And he wanted that man's wife. <laughs> because he looked. Ain't nothing wrong with looking, but if you look too long. Remember, we talked about this Wednesday, I believe. How, how if you carry a weight, it eventually becomes a sin. You know, the weight is you looking lustfully. And when you look too long, now that you now you wanna you wanna taste it, you wanna touch it, you wanna feel it, because you have looked too long. David David saw Bathsheba and he wanted Uriah Uriah's wife, and he got her too. But to cover up their mess, they had to go back and kill him. Amen. So adultery begins before the act of adultery even happens yeah. and listen by the time you get to the act of adultery you're comfortable being in the room because you've already spent intimate time doing other things and it begins with conversation yeah. it begins with the conversation that's where, that's where the cheating begins, that's where the adultery begins, that's where the heart mm-hmm. remember I told you the law did with the sin and the actions of it, but Jesus did not deal with the heart of it. Amen. See, you got stoned for committing adultery, but Jesus said, if you commit it in your heart, if you're looking at her lustfully, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Amen. It, it, that, that, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Remember, again, Jesus is dealing with the heart of men. Let's, let's look at Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. We're going to begin at verse 17. Because I, I, again, we talk about this, but we got to make sure our heart is in the right place. That's what Jesus came when he came to fulfill the law. He came to show us, okay, it's not just about doing it, but you got to look at what happens before you get there. Let's look at Mark chapter 7, and we're going to begin at verse number 17. And when he entered into the house, for the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, Are ye so without understanding also? Do, do ye not perceive that whatsoever things from without entereth into man, it cannot defile him? Because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. Here we go, verse number 20. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. We're talking about what's in your heart. From, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Keep reading. Adultery, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Verse 23, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. And if you ain't turned that page out in your Bible, it's in red. That is Jesus speaking. So you got to see that 
So it's what's coming out, what's in you is coming out of you. If it's in your heart, it's gonna come out. So if, we, if, we, if we're talking about adultery, if we're looking and we're studying somebody else's wife, and not our own, or, or we we studying it, if we are married, and we studying a single woman that's not our wife, amen, it's beginning in our heart, and that's what defiles us. Because listen, the more we think about it, the more we wonder about it, you don't want to try it. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the truth. You go, you go. So that so that leads us then. I want to go somewhere before we, before we go there. To First Corinthians. Yeah, I, I didn't give out that those notes. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't give out take ten those notes. Look at the First Corinthians. Verse chapter, First Corinthians chapter six, and we're gonna begin at verse number nine. And I'm actually gonna read this from the English Standard Version because I, I want to, I want to be real. Crystal clear, if you will. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, those who fornicate, uh, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality. And we talked about that earlier, you know, about that man or man marriage, woman or woman marriage. Nor, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed and you were sanctified and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. I want to go there because I want you to go. I want you to remember we're having a kingdom perspective for we're going through this Jesus. His sermon on the mountain, and we just read where the where these line of people, look, the, these who, who who can contribute or do these acts here, or this kind of lifestyle, the text Paul says they will not inherit the kingdom of God. So listen, Jesus is giving delivering this sermon, but it's a it's a sermon for those who are a part of the kingdom. And he's laying out precepts on how we should live within the kingdom of God so that we can inherit the kingdom of, he of heaven. Right. Amen. But listen, I don't say this as, as pastor, as preacher, as even Leon from a judgmental standpoint. Because it is Paul says he'll search for some of you. I'm married, four kids. But three of them born out of wedlock. But, 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 but Paul also says here, and you keep reading it, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. You are sanctified, you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified. If you're in the kingdom of God and you hope to inherit the kingdom of God, then you cannot live any kind of way and expect to receive the benefits of the kingdom. Yeah, you, we, 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 we are required by Jesus to live a life that is pleasing before him. So we look at this, we're talking about how we should act and behave within the kingdom of God. And that means that we have to have some kind of conviction to get down to verse number 31. Verse number 30. 30 or 29. Where, where are we? Right here, 30. And if thy right hand, no, 29, if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it's profitable for thee that one, of, that one of the members should perish and not the whole body be cast into hell. And if the right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast, and cast it from thee. 
For it's profitable for that one of the members should perish and not the whole body should be cast into hell. Listen, listen. All, all Jesus is saying here is be intentional in avoiding sin. It's up to us to minimize our distractions. We have to be intentional in avoiding sin. That's an, it's, a, it's an exaggeration. We can't literally cut off our arm or pluck out our eye. But, but what Jesus wants us to understand is, look, don't go to hell because you're one little hango. What, what, what good is it for us to, to miss the mark because we got a wandering eye, B? We, we got a wandering eye that we can't control. We talked about this last week to talk about having self-control. That's a, a part of the fruit of the spirit. The one trace of the fruit of the spirit. Self-control. You know, it, it's, he, he, he wants, he's making a, 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 a make an over-exaggeration. Look, if you're if you your right, if your right hand, right hand, my right hand, if your right hand offends, you cut it off. If your right hand, if you can't keep this hand from touching what it's not supposed to touch, then you need to cut it off. Or keep it in your pocket. Do what you got to do. So that if this one hand causes the whole body to suffer. Amen, somebody. Plus, if you can, if you can't keep the eye under control, put some blinders on. You know, just do what you got to do. It's up, it is up to us to minimize our distractions and walk a walk that is pleasing before God. It is up to us to minimize our own distractions and walk a walk that is pleasing before God. If you are single, you're not married yet, and you you know you don't you can't stop. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord to take you back to before you knew a woman or a man. When did being a virgin become socially unacceptable? My wife and I was talking about this, and, and, and when, when I said it, she'd be like, wow. We raised our kids in the church. Raised up in the church, they go to Sunday school, vacation Bible school, they go off to college, and they're ready to get married. And then there are some people that say, no, you're too young to get married, you're too young to get married. But we expect them, or we should expect them, to keep themselves until they get married. But they too young to get married at 21 and 19. How long you expect them to hold out? Amen. 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 I was grown when I married my wife. And when I told my mom, I said, oh, mom, I'm going to propose to Tamika. Um, and we, and we probably won't get married this year. She said, why so soon? I said, because I don't want to be on the sofa for the whole, for too much longer. We weren't living together, but I would go over there every now and then to visit with her. But I was just telling the truth. If I'm expected to keep myself, why I gotta wait two years to get married if I know she's my wife? Right. And that's to the women who've been dating the same guy for eight years. If, you, if he hadn't married you yet, he does not want to marry you. Amen anyway. Just look at him right now. Look at him right now. Just stare at it. Just stare at it. Because this 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 is the truth. This is the truth. Men will date women for years and not make a commitment and marry her, and she'll put up with it. But if a man ready to get married and you not, he gonna cut you loose and find one that is. And listen, he'll date you five years, keep you from everybody else, break up with you, and meet a new girl and marry her in two months. Come on. Amen. 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 If he been with you this long and he has not married you, he doesn't want to. All right. All right. I, I said it. He doesn't want to. I understand that. As me, we want to make sure that we're stable, we're financially stable. I, I get that. I, I, I totally get that. As a matter of fact, we talked about that in, in marital counseling yesterday with the couple. I, I totally get that. Yeah, we want to be stable. But if we know that we're going to be violating God's principles while we wait to get stable, we need to just go ahead and get married. If you really love me and we end this thing together, I love you whether we're stable or not. Because guess what? When your lights are off, my lights are off. When your plate empty, my plate empty. We in this thing together. Amen. 
So stop settling for a, 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 just a piece of man when God wants to give you a whole man. They want to marry the cow and not just take the milk. Amen. Amen. We gotta stop settling. Cause I'm, I'm t I know, I know, I know I'm, 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 I'm straying, but I want, I gotta say this because I'm, I'm passionate about marriage. We should, my wife and I dated, and, I, and I'm not saying everybody should do this, but I, the Lord know what I needed, and he knew I couldn't wait a long time to get it. We dated six, we, no, we knew each other six months. We went on one day, and I, we was in love and then engaged, and then we was married. It, I, I, it, look, it is better to marry than to burn, right? <laughs> so if we want to live by godly principles, we got to do things in the order in which God wants it to be done in. We can't do what married folks do and we not married and expect God to bless your relationship like he blessed your friend who's married. Mm. Amen. Amen. So we'll talk, we'll talk about this and, and looking at what God's original plan for marriage is. Listen, if we know that we cannot stay out the bedroom and this is married, get, get, just get married. Just, just get married. If we know that we that we are married, we got a wandering eye, and it, it keeps us in. Keep your wife with you at all times. Keep your husband with you at all times. If, if you if you like attention from other men because your husband not giving you attention at home, because that's how it starts for women. They get attention from other men that they're not giving, getting at home. If, if that's your problem, you like the attention from other men. Keep your husband with you. You stay your buddy at home, one or the other. But you got to minimize your own distractions and your own hangups. Amen. Amen. So is your right hand offends you, cut it off. Your right eye plug you, pull it. Offends you, plug it, pull it out. You've heard um, it shall say, it said that you've heard it, it has been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. You heard that it's okay to divorce, but I say, that whosoever shall put away his wife for anything but fornication causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. And this is where the water get high. All right. This is where the water get high. And, and, and it gets to be a bit uncomfortable because we have people who have married and divorced. And, and that's okay because as Jesus says here, you've been heard that you've heard that if, if a man wants to divorce his wife, get her a certificate of divorce. But I say, if you want to put her away for any other reason other than fornication, then you cause her to commit adultery. And this is what I see in that. Because the, Jesus in, his, in, in this teaching, he says, if you put her away, you cause her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. When I read that, it, to me it implies that it is the husband's responsibility to keep his marriage together. Because when we don't, we cause her to commit adultery. I'm just, I'm just reading, I'm just reading some scriptures, okay? I'm just reading the Bible to you. Let's look at Deuteronomy 24, uh, 1 through 4. Deuteronomy 24, this is just the law, uh, 1 through 4. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes because he have found some uncleanness in her. Let then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband, that's the one she currently married to, the second husband, uh, write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Or if the latter husband, that's the second husband, 
died, which took her to be his wife. Her former husband, which is the first husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife. After that, she is defiled, for she, for that is an abomination before God, and thou shalt not cause the, the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Right. You got that? Did you get all that? So if she get married to her first husband and he divorced her, and she get a second husband, and then the second husband say he don't want her no more, or he dies, then she cannot go back to her first husband. I'm not sure about her third husband, but she can't go back to the first one. Because that's an abomination. And this is the thing about marriage. I told you, when we do premarital counseling, I ask the question, if this is something like is divorce an option? It's a trick question because divorce should never be an option in a Christian marriage. If you're both a Christian, you're both the same, that should never be an option. You should make a decision to consciously work to make your marriage work. Marriage takes work. It takes work. I don't care how long you've been married, it takes work. You have to be intentional in your marriage to make it work. But listen, Jesus says, he, he's saying that, listen, but that's why, he, and that's why he says here that if you put off in anything other than adultery or fornication, you can make it work. Anything else, you can make it work. Let's look at Mark. Because you got to understand, divorce came. Let's read Mark first. No, not Mark. Matthew. Matthew 19. We got a lot of scriptures, a lot of scripture references today. Matthew 19, verses 7 through 9. That says unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Listen, because of the hardness of your heart, I allowed him to divorce your wives. But that was not my plan in the beginning. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commit adultery. And whoso, and whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doeth commit adultery. Listen, he allowed divorce because of the hardness of the heart of the people. But that was not God's original plan for marriage. And that's where it gets tough. Because we have divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried and, and over and over again. But listen, listen, if that's your, if that's you, that is fine. Love the husband you have, love the wife you're with right now, love them, but make this one work. Make it work. We so easily give up and quit. Marriage should be a lifetime commitment. It's, it's, it's a life sentence. And it's up to you to make that an enjoyable sentence or an unenjoyable sentence. It's up to you. But God's original plan for marriage was for life unless someone commits adultery. Amen. And we have to realize that when we look at God's original plan for marriage, in order to say, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with this person, that it means we have to be intentional in making this marriage work. Many will say that, that you, well, I married this person before I was saved. And we, we got married unsaved and that wasn't the husband God had for me. That wasn't the wife that God had for me. So it's okay for us to divorce. Well, I want you to know that marriage is a, a sacred vow between man, woman, and God. And he honors it. So whether you step out on your own and marry who you wanted or you marry who God wanted, he honors that marriage. That marriage is what he honors. With the person you are legally married is what he honors. I don't care what state of mind you was in. You was in Las Vegas having a good time and wanting too many drinks. Led you to the altar. Guess what? Now the Lord honors your marriage. And it's up to you to make it work. And we have to really be intentional in that matter. Do you know that divorce is more prevalent in the church now than it ever was before? Yeah, we just divorce.
us and left and right. And, and we divorce it and not talking to people, not getting the proper help that we need. Listen, I've shared this story before plenty of times. Um, when I was, ooh, I guess we had to be, have been married for three years. And I can remember sitting on the sofa like, man, this is for the birds. I tried this thing now. I know I say we ain't going to divorce, but indeed, this is for the birds. I'm, I'm about to tap out. And I remember texting several married men. I was like, like, like look, I need some help around this camp. It's, 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 I'm about to throw the deuces. And I remember all of them saying, oh, oh, hang in now. It's going to be all right. Hang in, that's gonna be all right. My dad said, "Come out." My dad, he don't want to give him a response. My dad, he said, "Come out. We can talk about it. We can hang out. We can talk. We can talk." But everyone said, "Hang in there. Hang in there. Hang in there." And I was like, "Man, I need more to hang in there. I don't want to be hanging for 19, 20, 30 years. I want to be in living and enjoying. Amen. And that's what your marriage should do. Your marriage should really bring you joy." Goes back to what I said earlier when I led into this. When we get married, we marry our best friend. We marry our boyfriend. We marry our girlfriend. That's who we marry. And somehow between saying I do and raising a family, we forget to be boyfriend and girlfriend. You know, we forget to just, like, like you saw me, um, she saw me Mother's Day, pop my wife on the behind. She said, my girlfriend, she's still the baddest woman in the baddest woman in the land. She still lives. And I, and I can do that every now and then. Why? Because I'm married to her. But we get married and we forget to be boyfriend and girlfriend. But that's who I married. I married my boyfriend. I, I married my girlfriend. So if that's who I married, whatever I did to get to this point, I got to continue to do it. But it only means now I have to be intentional in doing it. Why? Because being married, things are going to happen. You got a family, you got bills, you got other responsibilities. There are going to be things that will come in and try to consume your life. And you're focused on your career. You're focused on being a good mother. You're focused on being a good husband. But you're not spending time together. So you get people who have been married 20, 30 years filing for divorce, and you got gray hairs, 60 year marriages filing for divorce. Why? Because they grew apart and they weren't intentional in spending time and staying to know each other. I was 29 when I got married. I am not the same man at 29 that I am at 39. You, you will be a fool to think that your husband or your wife is the same person you married 10, 20, 30 years ago. They have grown, they have matured, they've developed, they've trained. That's why you have to be intentional in growing together. Spending time together so that you can grow together and not grow apart. What? Marriage is a lifetime commitment. There are several animals that made for life. Beavers made for life. Seahorses made for life. Gray wolves made for life. The French angelfish made for life. Most swans made for life. Um, the, al the albatross, that's a bird, they made for life. Some species of penguins made for life. The barn eagles made for life. Bald eagles made for life. Black vultures, black vultures made for life. Why is it hard for humans to marry for life? Are we any less than those animals that God created? That he would give animals, some species of animals, only eyes for their mate. But we can't be married and have only eyes for our husband or our wife. Listen, if you've been married before, you've divorced and you've remarried, or you divorced and consider remarrying again, it's been. It's not a place of judgment, but you want to make this marriage work. You want to be intentional in making it work. You want to be intentional and say, Lord, 
I'm, this, I'm gonna make this thing work. My wife and I, every Monday, every Monday, I want you to join us. If you're watching us online, join us on, on Facebook. We Facebook sound the baby. We do marriage Mondays. Every Monday at seven o'clock. And we sit down with married couples and we talk about marriage stuff. I want you to join us Mondays at seven o'clock. Central Time, 7 o'clock Central Time on our Facebook page, Sound the Bells. Because we have to really be intentional in equipping ourselves. Listen, when we do marriage counseling, I tell them, at the end of marriage counseling, one of two things are going to come out of this. Either you're going to know for certain that you want to be married and you're ready to be married, or you're going to be like, hold up, I may not be ready for marriage at the end of premarital counseling. But guess what? Even if you say, I'm ready for it, I'm in it, let's do it, you got to see what they have, what they call, teachers call uh, continuing education. And you know, you got to continue to work at being married, continue work at staying the apple of his eye, staying the apple of her eye. You got to continue to work at that. So we offer Marriage Monday every Monday at 7 o'clock. We sit down with other married couples who've been married longer than us, less time than us, but they all have a different story to talk about and they share it. Because listen, what I've learned, I, 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 this is a subject matter that I absolutely love talking about because if I told my wife before I got married that divorce is not an option, if I made that commitment, then I need to know what does the Lord require concerning marriage to make it not an option. So it's a subject matter that, that, that we both love talking about. And I, I know I do because I want my marriage to work even on our worst days. And Lord knows we have them. <laughs> I still want it to, once I cool off and I, you know, I like her again, I want it to work. <laughs> But in the heat of the moment, I probably be like, man, you get your keys, I get my keys. But we have to really be intentional in making marriage work. Mm -hmm. Because God's plan for marriage was to be a lifetime commitment. Um, as we close today, I want to pray that husbands um, begin to love their wives like Christ loved the church so much that he gave his life for it. We're going to pray for wives to love and honor their own husbands. You know, Sarah called her husband Lord with the little L. And she served her husband. And we have to see serving our spouse as our obligation. Like, discovering your spouse's love language. Women need to be affirmed. They need to be appreciated. They want to be loved. Men want to be respected, want to be heard, want to be obeyed too. But you got to find out what those love languages are. It's up to you. Like, I can tell you, I can give you, I can tell you what the Bible says about marriage and what the Lord requires of us in marriage. I can, I can do that. I can give you examples and testimonies of my own marriage. But guess what? Every marriage is different. And you have to know your husband. You have to know your wife. As we pray today, we're going to be praying for marriages. Um, that the Lord restores marriages. Um, that those who are single, who are designed to get married, that you go back to before you knew a man. And you keep yourself. Go back to before you knew a woman. And you hold, hold that to the Lord. Send that to you. My wife and I, we were born again virgins when we got married. Amen. We both had children. We were born again virgins. You to know that the Lord has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your marriage. That He wants your marriage to really reflect heaven in every way possible. Don't you know that? That Lord, He wants your marriage to reflect heaven. He wants people to see your marriage like, man, I want that. And every marriage is different. But God has a plan for every marriage. God, we thank you today, Lord. We pray today, God, for marriages. We pray, God, that you will bless the homes of those who are married, Lord God. We pray, God, that you will continue to equip husbands with that love in their heart, God. That, that, that love within them comes out for their wife, God. 
that the and their wife is the apple of their eye, that they love her like Christ loved the church so much that he gave his life for her, God, that husband began to just shower their wife with their love language. Whatever it is, Lord, we pray, God, that wives begin to submit and honor their own husbands. They submit to their own husbands, Lord God, that they love their own husbands, God, that they serve their own husband, that they're able to call their husbands Lord with a little L and serve them as such. We pray, God, that their homes are a place of peace and unity, God. We pray, God, for restored marriages, God. Marriages that may be on the brink of falling apart or hanging on to one leg, God. We pray that you restore those marriages. We pray, God, that your Holy Spirit come in, God, and, and take away pride, God, that pride does not come in and, and make them just hold pride from just simply saying, I'm sorry. I was wrong. We come to the spirit of pride and we try to come into homes, Lord God, and bring in division and strife because we know pride comes before the fall. We come in the spirit of pride in homes, Lord God, that husbands can be honored, can be humble and vulnerable before their wives and, and, and know that she will keep it. And that wives can be vulnerable before their husbands and, and know that he will keep it, God. God, the man and the woman they can stand there together naked and unashamed, beholding nothing, Lord God. We pray right now, God, for strength in marriages. God, for those who are married, God, who are just trying, who, who want to begin to have a family, God, and having a hard time having children. We know that you are the giver of life, and we speak life to wounds today. That wounds begin to give life in the name of Jesus. We've never been in such a time where married women, married Christian women are having a hard time conceiving, but we speak life to those wombs now in the name of Jesus, knowing that God is the giver of life. We thank you today, God, that you're going to do it. And you get all the glory from their marriages in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you're watching today, before we go out there and I leave, and I get the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're watching today and you have not made him your Lord, your Savior, you have not confessed him with your mouth. Listen, don't, don't, don't go another way. Don't stroll up another moment. In this moment, say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart, into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I need you today, Lord. Make that commitment. If that's you making that commitment, email me. If you're watching on YouTube, make the comment section and say, that's me. So we can, we can reach out to you and pray with you. Make sure that you have an absolute best for you in your life and what God wants for you. St. Joseph, we have a big event happening this Friday. I want you to be a part of this coming Friday. We're going to be having family Zoom night. We did Zoom night in April. Um, and we had a great time. It was awesome. We can be doing it again this Friday. Um, you can we can be sending the information out via text message. It's on our Facebook page. Uh, please get the information. Join us on Zoom this Friday at 6 30. We're gonna have a great time. It's going to be fun. All right. God bless you. I love you. I'm Leon Bell Jr., the pastor of St. Joseph Baptist Church in Mobile, Alabama. God bless you and have a great day. Wow, what an amazing service. Well, thank you again for joining us. Listen, if you're married, thinking about being married, I want you to know God's original plan for your marriage. He really intends for us to be married for life. So listen, whether you're happily married or not so happily married, make the best of it. Seek counsel and seek the Lord that he may bless your marriage and things will begin to turn around. God bless you. Also, if you made a commitment to follow Jesus today, email me so I can be praying with you and walk you to the plan of salvation because we absolute want, we want absolute best for your life. God bless you. Have a great week.